and we were talking about how we could do a little better than just saying, hey, we have, um, we have uh, two things, a mobile or a full site. We can actually configure the site um, to work optimized for um, more specific information about the, the site. And we can create classes. And we can do similar to what we did before, uh, where we had a, a, a mobile and a full, but we can fine tune it. Uh, the example in the book, it shows like if there was an unsupported device, what to do. If there was a full version of, of the, the, the site, what to do. If it was a low-end phone, what to do. If it was a high-end phone, what to do. And finally, if it was a tablet, what to do. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to expand the example that we had before where we just had um, uh, a determination of whether it was mobile or full and we're going to put that in so uh, we're going to put code in to make sure that we get uh, what we want depending on the device. When you do something like this it's, it's important to plan. Um, Remember why we're doing this. The whole reason that we're going through all this trouble is that, number one, we might want a different appearance depending on the platform. For example, on a mobile flat platform, we might want to use a jQuery mobile to give sort of an app look to um, our pages. In addition, we might want different content. All right. For example, we saw using Werfel, if it was a phone, we could actually create a telephone link. Whereas, um, if it's a full version of the site, maybe we put additional content, such as a video and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just sort of arbitrarily pick a few things to do differently just so that we can look at it and work through this example. Your next uh, homework assignment is to do something like this for your page to, um, to um, have, three, hi, have three different versions uh, of it. One for the mobile, one for the full version, and one for the desktop. Is this just a capture? Yes. Because otherwise I think I have the right thing on, oh. and I don't. Why do you care that I care? <laughs> I just replaced this projector. Uh huh. It didn't come on. Okay. Well, that's fine. This is on. This little thing over here is on, so I can see. But it's nice to have it right in my yeah. line of vision. I messed up a few times last week, uh, or not last week because we were off, but the week before because of that. I'm just saying. All right. Well, I'm just going to continue. You do what you need to do. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. It's a rare behind the scenes look at at. There we go. Hey. All right. Now I can see myself in the back. All right. So, if you remember from last time, we had our page that looked like this. Let me make sure I start up the Server. We had a page that looked like this on the full version. What I'm going to do is on the tablet version, I'm not going to show the video. So the full version I want to have look like this. The tablet version I want to have look like this, but no video. And the mobile version, I want the jQuery mobile look for it, which we had last time. Maybe we will do something such as throw in a phone number. Uh, that they can call if they have any questions. Uh, where is Opera mobile app? There we go.
All right, and there we have the jQuery mobile look for it. So we're going to try to refine that a little bit further and make a tablet version of this that has, looks sort of like the desktop but version, but doesn't have uh, the video on it. And we're not going to use the, the browser sniffing or the user agent sniffing that we did before because we want more information about it. So we're going to work in and we're going to incorporate um, into this uh, the, the logic uh, from uh, using Werfel. Now, in order to do that, I have to be running on the web server where Werfel's been installed. And since it's not installed on this web server, I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to go and run all this on the CIS SQL server. So as I make my changes here, I'm going to copy them over there and make sure it works. All right. So let me. What is it I want to do? I will go and. start an FTP session so that I can copy the files back and forth. All right. And I will put it underneath the CISS 268 folder. I'll create a new folder for this. And we'll call it, what do we call it? We'll call it, we'll call it MJQ Warful. So, I may only do the home page for this. I, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll check on the time for this. But if you, if you get the home page down, you get the rest of them down. All right. Here's code that we looked at last time, which is our Werfel example. And I'm going to need this include file. All right. I'm going to need this include file because this include file is really what connects it to the Werfel database. These lines of code here are what points to the Werfel database and the Werfel resources. That e inet pub ww root Werfel is the physical location of these files on the CIS SQL. This requires you know, an absolute physical path. So that's why it's put in as E, blah, 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 whatever. This is only going to be used on the server. Um, so if you installed it on your server, you'd put the path to wherever you have the stuff. I need this, though. And just, just for consistency's sake, I'm going to rename it to be um, INC. And I'll copy it into here. All right. If we look at our index page, we're already using the include file for the user agent. This is where I'm going to put my Werfel code. All right, to determine which of the three classes. So I'm going to have an is mobile, an is full, and an is tablet. Uh, three variables that I can test anywhere. And I'll use the same include file. I'll just edit the contents of it. I'm going to go, though, and include the Werfel include file. put that in the includes folder. And it's called Werfel config standard. So let me go and copy that name. And 
and I'll put this here. These two things are going to be on the top of each of my, uh, each of my pages. I suppose I could combine them into two if I really wanted to. Or combine the two into one, rather, if I really wanted to. But I'll keep them separate. Remember, you know, it's a good idea to sort of break things down just because, you know, in this particular application, I want to, um, I want to distinguish between three classes, the mobile, the full, and the tablet. Another application, I might want to have a finer... Uh, level of uh, granularity where I might want like they do in the textbook, five, exam uh, five uh, classes. So I'm going to have three booleans that I can test in anywhere in my um, page that will be is mobile, is full, and is tablet. So what I got to do now is I have to go into the includes and I have to fix this user agent. Because this user agent currently just holds the code that we got from that one website. We want to do a better job of that. and We want to do something similar to what they've done in the textbook. So I'm essentially going to uh, borrow the code that starts that we looked at last week. What we're not going to do, though, is we're not going to write the fancy function that they write um, that makes their life easier, the one that's on 191. There's, they, they wrote a matching function. That seems to me to be a bit of overkill. It's a nice function. It would allow you to test all sorts of different things, but I think it's a little overkill for our purposes. So what I'm going to do instead is... I'm going to copy this code and I'm actually going to trim down quite a bit of it because this I adapted from another example and there was some superfluous code in here. So I'll go and I'll take this example and we'll trim out some of the stuff that's really not needed. All we really need is this line to look at who has made the HTTP request and return some information about it. Return actually a requesting device object. Then what I can do is I can ask questions of that. All right. So, this is a line that allows me to ask that requesting device some questions. Do you have this capability or not? 
And in this case, it's asking for brand name. I'm not interested in the brand name. I'm going to start out by asking if this is a tablet or not. All right. So, how do we know the syntax to put in there to, to ask if it is a tablet? Well, we'll go here and we'll Google a list of all the things that we are allowed to ask this Werfel object. Here's a list of all the things that we are allowed to ask. And one of them is tablet. So we can ask this guy, are you a tablet? And if they're a tablet, we can identify as a tablet and then we can go and we can add code specifically for the tablet. So I'm going to go and put in here dollar sign is tablet equals asking the Werfel object for the capability of is tablet that will either return true or false. So when I'm done from here, um, is tablet is going to contain a boolean. It indicates whether this is a tablet or not. Now, I'm a firm believer of just doing a little bit of code at a time. All right, I talk about that in almost all my classes and I really stress that. So I'm going to stay true to my word here. All right, we want three classes, but because I don't feel like coding all that stuff before I test it, I'm going to make sure this two class thing works. In other words, I'm going to assume either it is the full version or it is um, a tablet. So, so if it's not a tablet, then I'm going to assume it's full. And I'm going to assume it's not a mobile device. Now to be sure, this code we're going to have to go back and revise. This isn't the full job. But this will allow us to test some key things. This will allow us, first of all, to test to make sure that the mechanism between our server and the Werfel include and the Werfel database is wired correctly. All right? Is it working? Is it, are, the, are the two things, are the different entities here able to talk to each other? And if they are, then great. Then we can go on and start adding in the check for the, the functionality if it's a mobile device or if it's full. We can actually do this for real instead of just saying hard coding. Well, if it's not a, a tablet, then we assume that it is a full version. So otherwise, I'm going to set is full and is mobile to false. I spelled tab, I spelled table. There we go. All right. The three equal signs in PHP, by the way, are a safer way to do comparisons. Um, in a nutshell, the three equal signs indicate that there's no data type conversion. In other words, you can compare an integer to a Boolean. And it's something like if it's zero, it's considered false if it's anything else is considered true or vice versa. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember that. But when you do the equal, 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 then it's not going to do any sort of implicit data type conversion. So would that still work with two? Yeah. Um, it should still work with two. Right. Let's see exactly. Let's get a more precise definition. Right. If we do an equal, if x is equal to y, 3 equals says identical. In other words, it uh, makes sure they're the same type. And 
for example, they give the example of if, if I were to say 5 equal, equal, equal the string 5, that would return a false. Whereas if I had two equal signs, it would return a true. Likewise, if I compared a true to the string true, and some and trues and false uh, correspond to numbers, and again, I'm not sure what, uh, how they go. The bottom line is the safer way to do the comparison is with three equal signs. But you're absolutely right. In this case, since I know that function's returning a Boolean, um, it's not that big a deal either way. All right, so there's my user agent. I'm grabbing that, I'm checking, and I'm seeing if it is a tablet or not. All right. I'm going to put just some dummy code here that says, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go here and I'm going to, I already have that file open. So I'm going to get rid of all the HTML I'm going to have a web page. It's all it's going to do is going to return, it's going to return the word tablet or not tablet. All right, or tablet or not. All right, let me go save this. Save it. And this we weren't working on. All right, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to copy this stuff up to my web server. So I'll go, take all these things and pop them up to the web server. Take a few minutes to do that. One danger with this, remember, is that if you recall last time, it was misidentifying some of the things. It was misidentifying some of the tablets as being um, phones and not tablets. So the tablet I have today, I believe it got right uh, when I tested it at home. All right, so now it's out on the server. Let's see how this works. So let's go and let's open up my browser. And let's go into Werfel MJQ. That's here. Or MJQ Werfel. Let's open up. Copy the index, geez. All right. There we go. And drum roll, please. Shows nothing. Let's view source. Why that happened? Because I am a bonehead. And I don't have my declarations for PHP correct. All right. 
So we'll do take two. Save. Try copying this guy over. Do I want to replace? Yes, I do. All right. Take two. All right. Tells me it's a tablet. All right. Obviously, something's wrong with my code. Let's look at this. actually just do this if tablet is tablet all right let's try that I'm not gonna lie and say I plan this but this is, a, this is a good example could you imagine if I would have done a lot more work and had thought that that was all good and then I was getting crazy results if this doesn't work then I can't hope for anything else to work so I can go here and it sure thinks that this is a tablet I'll be darn it's tablet Let's check in the book. Let's see what test they use for a tablet. Ah, they first test they first test to see if it is wireless. So That is on 196. So I'm first going to ask this, is this wireless? And I will ask, is wireless device? So if it is a wireless device, I'll then check to see if it's a tablet. So I'll first check to see if it's wireless. If it's wireless, I'll check to see if it's a tablet. If it's a tablet, then I will set these two to false. Otherwise, I'll set this to true.
right, let's try this. Parse there, unexpected TLs in line 20. we go. Let's remember back to our first programming classes here. Let's try this. Let's initialize these variables. If I'm understanding the book right, we don't even test to see if it's a tablet unless we've shown that it's wireless. It's possible that with a desktop device it returns true to its tablet, regardless of whether it's really a tablet or not. So I first have to make sure it's wireless, then I can ask if it's a tablet. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that um, it's not a tablet. All right, let's try this. Turning tablet. All right, let's break this down a step at a time.
get rid of all that. And let's ask some other questions of it. Let's ask for the ID of the device. Let's see what this says for this device. I'm just copying some of the code, um, the test code. Requesting device equals manager get dollar sign underscore server. Save. This isn't PHP. All right, it seems to know that we are running Microsoft Internet Explorer. Okay, that's good. Let's throw that tablet variable on the end. And what else do we say is wireless device?
Okay. So, it doesn't think we're wireless, but it thinks we're a tablet. All right, which is kind of odd. I wouldn't have thought it would have said that. But, so we should be able to write code around this. I must not have just been doing it right. So let's go in and let's write code here that says, here I'm going to put my PHP block. And I'm going to set my three classes Actually, they use a string variable, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to set a class variable. Instead of having the three Booleans, I'm going to have a, one, a single string variable. That way, um, it'll be easier um, to, to, uh, to code for that. I guess there's advantages both ways, but we'll try it this way. So. I can ask. If it's a wireless device, I can say class equals wireless. Else, Class equals desktop. And then down here I can echo thinks it's wireless. Am I getting burned on the fact that that's a string? Let's try that. No, let's try this. I'm going to reboot here. We'll 
I'll try rebooting and see what's up with that. Because I lost my taskbar functionality. This, by the way, is why I suspect they wrote that matching uh, capabilities function to get around the stupid things like this. All right. So my guess is had we used this function like they told us to, that we wouldn't have this issue. So, I hope this will fix it. We will likely destroy the tapes of this class. And we'll simply post the example. Again, if any good can come out of this discussion, The good would be that while this is being a real pain and I'm having a real hard time with this, I'm having a real hard time with a couple of lines of code. All right. Had I had hundreds of lines of code, my headaches would have been multiplied to the to the tenth power. All right. So at the very least, we're showing the the the, the benefits of just doing a little bit of debugging at a time. And doing it in a systematic way of going in and actually seeing what those variables have. Now, we don't have the luxury of a debugger in PHP, uh, but we can go and do like we're doing here and just putting in the echoes. So, again, we at least have that going for us. And we finally, after three hours, have correctly identified this as being a desktop. Now, it almost scares me to try. Let's try to see if it can identify a tablet. And I think I have a tablet in here. Yeah. And I think this is even the one that identifies itself as a tablet, which is a good thing. So let's go to our browser.
Well, that was the right one. And drum roll, please. It indeed shows that it is a wireless device. Yay. It's the little things that keep you going, you know. All right. So, what lesson did we learn? Lesson we learned is that function that they put in the book was actually a very good function because that would have saved me a lot of confusion. And we learned the difference between comparing uh, with, with uh, or I learned the difference between the difference between comparing with data conversion and with no conversion. So, we now have a script that we at least know for the first bit of it works. So this isn't a small, well it is kind of a small victory, but it isn't so small because now we know that this guy's wired correctly to Werfel. All right, That there isn't a problem with our configuration or there isn't a problem with our Werfel database. It's just that I was being a bonehead. Okay. Now we got that out of the way and now hopefully we're smarter. We can go in and we can expand this and we can take it a step at a time. For example, right now the code shows if it is wireless or if it is a desktop. We can go and we can expand that code to see if it is a tablet. So. Really what I have to do is put this here. Ask if it is tablet. If not, we can set to tablet. Otherwise, we can set the class to mobile. All right. Let's save that. Do 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 do. Is if document get if requesting device item is tablet equals true. Class equals tablet, otherwise class equals mobile looks good to me. Let's go and do our FTP again. And we can go and we can copy that over. And this guy still knows he's a desktop. This guy now is smart enough to know he's a tablet. Ooh, I'm on a roll now. And finally, we'll check the mobile device to verify that it knows that it's a mobile device.
Oh my goodness. It knows it's a mobile device. So we have our three classes defined. We have our, our three test cases. Now if I had one of those other tablets, if memory serves, those, uh, this one is the Motorola Zoom. What was those other ones? Those other ones were Samsung Galaxy, I think. The Samsung Galaxy doesn't identify itself correctly, and that's always sort of a pitfall of this, because if it doesn't say it's a tablet, or if it's not recorded correctly in the database, then, then uh, there's nothing we can do. So there is that vulnerability. Now, again, all kidding aside, this went a lot longer than I thought. I thought it would be a lot further along with this. However, the advantage of doing a little piece at a time is, had I tried to write the whole thing, I could almost guarantee by now I wouldn't have had everything figured out. I'd still be scratching my head and it would be time to go and I'd leave discouraged. Now at the very least, when I leave, and we leave here, we got something successfully done. Now you could argue and say it should have taken half the time, yeah you're right, but at least we got something successfully done and that's something we can build on as opposed to putting forth a lot of effort and not making any progress. And that's good from so many levels. That's good, first of all, um, from, from just a, a psychological uh, uh, benefit. You know, I mean, I, I only feel like half a loser now as opposed to a complete loser now, all right, because I eventually got it to work, all right. It's also good from a practical sense because now we're reasonably sure that this guy, that this function here is right. I want to do this one. So, I can go and get rid of all my debugging code, which is like this stuff here. And this guy down here. And I should be pretty sure that when this is done, that class variable has in it um, whether it's a desktop, mobile, or whatever. So if anything, now, you know, I probably should test it again now that I've taken out those lines of code, but I feel pretty confident I didn't do any damage on this one. So when we pick up on this on Wednesday, maybe after just a brief test to make sure I didn't break anything by removing those lines of code, we should be able to go forward then with the reasonable assurance that this guy works. All right? It's not a guarantee. It's possible, again, by me cutting out that code, I cut out one too many line or something like that. So uh, you're not guaranteed. You should go back and retest it. But I can be pretty sure that this works. I'm pretty confident that it works. So if something doesn't work on Wednesday, it's probably not this. It's probably the new, new stuff that we added in. All right? So. We'll pick up on this on Wednesday and um, build from this and, and now that we know this, this actually is the hard part of it. Now that we have this going, the rest of it should go pretty easily and we can just put a bunch of if statements in that depending on the class that we've identified, we can show different content or we can show different styling. All right. Well, thank you very much.